Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne and I'll be taking a look at this Asus ROG Maximus 8 Hero Motherboard and that reminds me of that song. I can be your hero, baby. You can take my breath away. Anyway, <laughs> this is a Skylake motherboard and I'll be using this for my upcoming Skylake build, so be sure to look forward to that. This is a Socket LGA 1151 board with the Intel Z170 chipset. It looks like you get a 15-day premium account for World Warships and an invite to the Diana Cruiser. This motherboard comes with Supreme FX 2015 for high-quality sound you're probably going to be very happy about. You get an ESS 9023 DAC with HyperStream technology, and the dedicated clock is a dedicated oscillator that provides an accurate reference frequency for the DAC. This board uses Nichicon capacitors. There's also op amps, operational amplifiers located beneath the Supreme FX shroud on the motherboard. An op amp can be used to convert differential signals into single-ended and provide gain. It can drive 2 volts into any headset. Sonic Studio 2 is where you can toggle your audio effects. Sonic Sense Amp detects headphone impedance and sets the correct level of gain automatically. The perfect noise feature provides noise cancellation for clarity during game chat. And Depop Relay prevents DC thump when the system is switched on or off. Game First technology allows you to prioritize bandwidth for games or other tasks. You also get Intel Ethernet, which reduces your CPU workload for a game boost. There's also LandGuard. It helps protect your motherboard from static electricity. Keybot 2 is an interesting feature. It's a microprocessor that transforms your keyboard into a programmable one, which enables you to create macros and access other special functions. S5 mode is standby state for when the system is off. It allows for special functions like an OC key from the F11 key, XMP from F12, and the direct key takes you into UEFI and you can even power on the system by hitting the enter key. There's also a clear CMOS key command which can be useful as you won't need to reach around to the rear of your system to open up your side panel for access in most cases. Here's a look at the list of compatible keyboards that work with Keybot 2. It's a sizable list. ROG RAM Cache intelligently caches commonly used files to DRAM to help speed up access times. Overwolf is an in-game dock for you to share content while gaming via apps. There's also rich bundles like AI Suite 3, and one of the main modules is DIP5, which stands for Dual Intelligent Processors. It runs and monitors a stress test in real time, which is used for automated overclocking. It also automatically sets the fan speeds for you. Other features include ROG CPU Z, Mem Tweakit, Kaspersky, and others. There's even lighting control on this board. This is the first motherboard that I've personally seen with that option, and it's something to get excited over. You can change the lighting shades to alert you when your CPU gets too hot, or have the lights pulsate to music you're listening to. Extreme Engine Digi Plus is the VRM solution that supplies power to the CPU with a combination of digital butt controllers, MOSFETs, and long live capacitors. Sonic Radar 2 is an in-game overlay that allows you to see where sounds are coming from in an FPS game. It's pretty handy for deaf gamers. DTS Connect allows for conversion of multi-channel audio into a DTS stream for output over SPDIF to use with an external receiver. It transforms stereo sound into virtual 7.1 over SPDIF. And it looks like you get a 3-year limited warranty for this motherboard. Let's see what you get in the box. Here's the user manual, and I never build without it. This is the driver CD, and I prefer getting the updated drivers online, and I've been seeing quite a few optical driveless cases around these days. There's also cable label stickers for your drives and whatnot, and there's even a set for keybot labels. I see some ASUS stickers as well as a case badge to show where your loyalties lie. And here's a door hanger for those who don't live alone. It says, Game on, you shall not pass. Cute. You get a foam padded IO shield. No crazy colors here, just a shiny plate. Included are 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second cables, 3 L shape, and 3 straight plug connectors. This is a Q connector to make things easier for you when plugging in your power, reset, and hard drive LED cables. There's even a CPU installation tool, which I've never seen before. Here's a bag with a standoff and screw inside for M.2 drive mounting. Last but not least is a flexible SLI bridge. As you can see, the PCB is black, and here's where the VRM coolers are bolted in. This is an ATX form factor board measuring 305 millimeters or 12 inches by 244 millimeters or 9.6 inches. Something I've noticed is the hefty weight of this board. Good materials, no doubt. As for the design, it's black and gunmetal mostly, with hints of red. There's a very eye-catching plastic ROG cover that's over the rear I.O. panel and parts of the VRM coolers. I love the sharp fin styling of the aluminum coolers. You get a row of microfine alloy chokes beneath each heatsink. And the word slick comes to mind when looking at the cooler over the Z170 chipset. The RGB LEDs are located under this heatsink where the ROG logo is. I'll show you how this board lights up once the Skylake system has been built. This board comes with two CPU fan connectors, a water pump connector, and four system fan connectors. These are all four pin. There's even a five pin extension fan connector. This connector is for a fan extension card that adds an additional three controllable headers to the board. 
This is the LGA 1151 CPU socket. It supports 6th gen Intel Core processors. Here's a look at the 4 DDR4 DIMM slots. You get dual channel memory supporting up to 64 gigs, as well as support for DDR4 up to 3733 MHz overclocked. You also have support for non-ECC unbuffered memory and Intel XMP for overclocking the memory. These are the three PCIe 3.0 x16 slots that support x16 mode for single card or x8 x8 modes for dual card or x8 x8 x4 modes for triple card setup. The upper two gray PCIe slots receive their lanes directly from the CPU, so you'll definitely want to plug a graphics card or cards into those. The black PCIe X4 slot is from the PCH PCIe lanes. You have support for NVIDIA Quad GPU SLI and AMD Quad GPU Crossfire X. For those who don't already know, Quad does not mean four cards, it means two cards with two GPUs on each card. I'm surprised there's no steel armor around the X16 slots. And here are the three PCIe 3.0 X1 slots. I may install a wireless card in here in the future. Above this X1 slot is the System Fan 1 connector, and to the left of that is the T-Sensor connector. This is for the thermistor cable that allows you to monitor the temp of your motherboard's critical components and connected devices. There is a CMOS battery located here. Let's take a tour around the edges of the motherboard. On the top edge is the 8-pin CPU power port, and to the right are the CPU fan and water pump connectors. If you don't end up using the water pump connector, it can function as a regular fan connector, and you can control it through UEFI. In the right corner is the MEM OK button for automatic memory compatibility tuning for successful booting. Below that is the Q code LED that provides you with a two digit error code on the system status. On the right edge is the System Fan 4 connector, and this is the 24 pin main power connector. Right beneath the power connector are the Q LEDs for boot, VGA, DRAM, and CPU. These LEDs will flash if there is an error found. Here's the System Fan 2 connector and USB 3.0 connector below that. We have the hard disk LED here, which indicates hard disk activity. You get six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Four ports are reserved for SATA Express. There's also two darker colored SATA 6 gigabit per second ports provided by the Asmedia ASM 1061 chipset. These two connections are slower than the other SATA operating from Intel's chipset. Be sure to use these for slower storage devices. RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10 are available on SATA 1 to SATA 6. There's support for Intel Smart Response technology, which allows you to use an SSD with a hard drive to create a hybrid drive. This speeds up access by using smart caching. Here's the single M.2 socket 3 with M key slot. It supports PCIe Gen 3 X4 and SATA modes. You can install up to a 110 millimeter long card. It also has support for up to 32 gigabit per second speeds. On the bottom edge is the extension fan connector, system panel connector, and system fan 3 connector, another USB 3.0 connector, and two USB 2.0 connectors. There's an LN2 mode jumper above the USB 2.0 connectors that fixes the cold boot bug during post for successful system boot. The ROG extension connector is where one of the USB 2.0 connectors is. This connector is for the OC panel, front base, and other ROG devices. Next to that is the TPM connector, clear CMOS button, reset button, and start button, which is the power button. This is a 5-pin Thunderbolt header. It's for an add-on Thunderbolt I.O. card that allows you to connect up to six Thunderbolt-enabled devices and a DisplayPort-enabled display in a daisy chain config. And here's the front panel audio connector. Finally, we have a look at the rear I.O. It looks so weird to me with a roof over the I.O. And here's the PS2 keyboard and mouse combo port, and there are two USB 2.0 ports beneath that. This is a BIOS flashback button to the right of those ports. It's for updating the BIOS at low level. You get two additional USB 2.0 ports here, a DisplayPort 1.2 port with max res of 4096 by 2160 at 60 hertz, and HDMI 1.4 B port with max res of 4096 by 2160 at 24 hertz, and 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz next to the USB 2 ports. There's support for Intel Intru 3D tech for 3D gaming and movies. Of course, what Skylake board would be complete without USB 3.1 ports? You get a USB 3.1 Type-A port and USB 3.1 Type-C port. Can't wait to get my hands on Type-C compatible devices. Here's the Intel Gigabit LAN port with anti-surge LAN guard, two USB 3.0 ports beneath that, and finally we have the audio ports. Five ports are gold-plated and there's an optical SPDIF out. You get Realtek ALC 1150 codec with 8 channel 7.1 HD audio. The Realtek 1150 has a metal cover over it to help reduce interference from RFI and EMI. That wraps it up for this look at the ASUS ROG Maximus 8 Hero motherboard. If you like what you saw and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Join Tech Lover Facebook, join Tech Lover again on Twitter, and join Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Don't forget to hit the donate button to help expand this channel and feed this techie. Be sure to check out my other YouTube channels, JTL Lifestyle for Everyday Gadgets and JTL Cuteness Overload for an injection of cuteness into your day. Last but not least is storeenvy.com where you can go ahead and check out my 8.5 by 11 inch autograph prints that you can buy. I guess all that's left to say is, 